Hello, everyone. Uh, well, I was going to say Happy New Year, but uh, I guess we're not quite there yet, um, unless you live in another part of the world um, that is east of here. Um, it's uh, a few minutes after 7 o'clock here in the Mountain Time Zone. Um, and so uh, those of you that are over the pond, I'm not quite East Coast time, but over the pond um, celebrating, there's been stuff all over um, about that. But uh, welcome to the uh, final installment of uh, what Bowtie Living Acrostic stands for. Um, tonight we're going to look at the E uh, for expectancy and I'm pretty excited to share that and I'm you know, excited that it kind of uh, culminated with the end of 2019, um, quite a year and I'm hoping that uh, everyone out there had a, uh, had a good 2019 and is looking forward to 2020. You know, there was good and bad in my 2019, and um, I'm sure there will be both in 2020, but uh, I'm excited for the new year to to kick off in a few hours. So um, I'm very excited to be here, and uh, before we jump into the E, I just wanted to uh, go through real quick and uh, give everybody an update on the what we've already gone through. So we started a few nights ago with the B, which is our beliefs, and we looked at those and, and how those have come to form who we are, but they can also be changed. As long as we uh, move into the O, which is, op excuse me, openness. And openness is, um, are we open to wanting to change? First of all, are we open to recognizing things that we might need to change? Um, and there's other beliefs and values that we have that we don't want to change. But are we open to really looking at those things that have um, defined us or created us over the course of our lives? Which then takes us into W, of course. And W was where we... We actually make witness of our lives and we take a look back and, and we look at a timeline of all the events and situations and decisions and, and all those things that, that have shaped our lives up to this point. And um, we put them on a timeline and we look for anything that um, is either glaring or if there's any patterns or if there's um, things that uh, we want to learn from. Um, and really, really, we really look at um, what our life has been up to this point. Um, it's just very subject or very, um, you know, straight and forward. We look at it, we put it on a timeline, um, and then uh, we find those patterns. And then we got into T, and T was testifying to the truth. And, and that was really about us taking that personal responsibility for um, the things that uh, we had done in our lives, whether they were good or they're bad. Um, but taking personal responsibility for that and um, then turning around and if it was necessary to make amends and or offer forgiveness, we, we went through that part of the, uh, the program. And, um, and then last night we looked at the letter I, which was intentional. And um, that's just about living intentionally and, um, you know, looking at our lives and, and living each day um, consciously, willfully, purposefully. Um, and intentionally, um, especially after all the things that we learned going through the, the first four letters of our acrostic. Um, and then that brings us to um, the final letter in the bow tie living acrostic, which is E, as I had mentioned, and that's expectancy. And this is, um, you know, I think I say this every night about one of my favorites, but, um, you know, it's an interesting um, way to look at life. And um, E, of course, stands for expectancy and and we're going to talk a little bit about um, expectancy versus expectations um, because I shared last night how I had so many, man, I lived in a world of um, unrealistic expectations of, of myself um, as well as others. Well, hi, Happy New Year to you, Yvette. Thanks for jumping on. Um, looking sharp. Yeah, this is actually kind of just a, a side note here. This is kind of a fun bow tie. So this is actually feathers. Um, you'll actually see they're just different colored feathers um, that make up the bow tie. And so it's kind of fun. Um, I have another one too that actually has a picture of a peacock, the front of a peacock here, and then it's got peacock feathers that come up to like here. Um, that's kind of fun too. But I figured, you know, it was New Year's Eve, um, so I put on the old black and white uh, for New Year's Eve tonight. Um, uh, Renee, what's your word? Go ahead and type in what your word is. I was thinking about a word... Is it uh, expectancy? Um, 
for those of you that may or may not know this, one of the, the big things that people do for, for um, New Year's resolutions and goals, it's been around for a few years, and I love it, and I actually thought of my word um, earlier today, um, and I'll share that here in a minute, but um, my, uh, what you do is you come up with one word for the year, and you kind of live and embody what that word is, rather than you setting all these different goals. For example, my word for this year is... Um, is transformation or transform. Um, and really what I want to look at is all the different things in my life. So whether it's finances, whether it's health and wellness, um, whether it's relationships, wh whatever it might be. Um, and it's really about transformation. Um, and transformation doesn't necessarily mean I'm making huge changes. It just means that I'm going to approach it a little different. So um, Renee, that's great. And, and if your word is um, expectancy, that's really, really cool. Uh, well, hi, Allison. There's a there's a person I haven't talked to in a long time. I'm glad you could jump on and uh, watch tonight. Um, as I've mentioned, we are in the letter E for Bowtie Living and, and our acrostic, and E is expectancy. And, and expectancy versus expectations, and it's really um, kind of interesting. When we have expectations, um, as I did for a long, long time, and unrealistic ones, and I still struggle with it. I mean, I, I really do, um, because as I mentioned, I like to control, and um, I like to have things happen my way, and, you know, I work on that um, each and every day. Um, I may share a little bit. Today was not a good day. Um, my expectations of myself were not met, and um, I did not handle it very well, so... Um, but that's part of growth is recognizing and having that awareness of when there's good days and when there's bad days. Um, and so I was excited to jump on here tonight and show expect, share expectancy with all of you guys. So the difference between expectations and expectancy, expectations are really, um, our, our attitudes and thoughts, um, regarding the way things, the way that we think things should be or could be. And as I said, we're really putting rules. We're putting um, things around our thoughts and our attitudes and our ideas that um, we want to control. That's really what expectations are. Um, we expect other people to do certain things. We expect ourselves to do certain things um, the way that we think it should be. For I struggled with that for a long time. I thought everyone should do exactly what I wanted. And I was ruler of the world. Well, I come to find out I don't rule anything. Um, but, uh, but myself and my, my actions and my thoughts and my beliefs and, and the way that I respond and all of that, that's what I have control over. I don't have control over all the other stuff that happens in our world um, or happens in my day-to-day -day life either. So, But expectations can be very, very dangerous. I've heard it said that expectations are resentments um, just waiting to happen. And resentments, um, we talked about that um, a little while back or a couple days ago, and resentments um, will eat you up and tear you down. Um, and so expect expectations just sit in there. And that's why we want to look at what the difference is between expectations and expectancy and try to live in expectancy. And we, we don't need to create rules around things. You know, there's certain things and we have to follow rules, you know, laws and, and that kind of stuff. But the funny thing about expectations um, is that how many of you, and, and if you want to chime in, uh, you can do that as well. But how many of you have unwritten or uncommunicated expectations of others? Happy New Year to you, Michelle. Thanks for jumping on. appreciate it. Man, you are almost, uh, well, I guess you got a few hours yet before you get to happy, the, the new year. But, um, you know, those unwritten, those unspoken expectations um, are extremely dangerous. Whereas when we get into really what expectancy is, and I'm going to read something um, that came out of a book that I think is one of my, it's one of the, my most favorite things um, that, that really discusses the difference. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll get to that in here in a minute. But you know, we, we live in this world where we try to control and we try to, um, you know, really manipulate and um, get our way rather than just living in the moment as we had talked about last night. Um, and uh, thank you, Michelle. Um, 
But but I, let me jump in, and I'm going to read this. It's so I don't know if any of you have ever seen the movie, um, and I don't know that they have this conversation actually in the movie, but it, it is in the book, um, The Shack. Shack is one of my all-time favorite movies. Um, I just watched it uh, last week, um, actually around the Christmas holiday. It might have been the day after Christmas. Um, one of my favorite movies. I love the movie. If you don't know the premise of the movie, um, there's, it's about a guy named Mac, and his young daughter is kidnapped and murdered, and he uh, gets into this really dark place. And um, his wife is a very strong believer. He believes in God, but he really feels um, that God left him and wasn't there to save his daughter. And well, he ends up getting a letter in his mailbox, and um, he and it's signed from God. And um, God has invited him to the shack, and the shack is where they found. Um, that his daughter had been murdered. The body wasn't there, but um, found that his daughter was. And so he goes and he has this experience where he meets the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I love the movie. It's an amazing movie. It has so many great storylines in there and so many great learning opportunities that I've been able to experience um, through that movie. But there is a, there is a, um, a part in the book um, and again, I'm not sure that it actually happens, and I'm just going to read it because it, it's so perfect when it comes to the difference between expectations and expectancy. And it's actually Mac and God are having this conversation at the shack. And so I'm just going to read this, so I apologize, I'm just reading. But it says, Mac, if you and I are friends, there is an expectancy that exists within, within our relationship. When we see each other or are apart, there is expectancy of being together, of laughing and talking. The expectancy has no concrete definition. Think about your real close friends. <coughs> Excuse me. No concrete definition. It is alive and dynamic, and everything that emerges from our being together is a unique gift shared by no one else. But what happens if I change that expectancy into expectation? Spoken or unspoken, suddenly law has entered our relationship. Rules, right? Control. You are now expected to perform. Expected to perform a certain way. In a way that meets my expectations. Our living friendship rapidly deteriorate, deteriorates into a dead thing with rules and requirements. Another great word, requirements. What requirements are we putting on others? It is no longer about you and me. But, argued Mac, if you, you didn't have expectations and responsibilities, wouldn't everything fall apart? Only if you are of the world apart from me and under the law. Responsibilities and expectations are, this is important, the basis of guilt and shame and judgment. And they provide the essential framework that promotes performance as the basis of identity and value. How many of us live every single day promoting, having these expectations? And all that does is promote, and I love that, promotes performance as the basis of identity or value. Well, I shouldn't put those rules on anybody else or myself and or God. Um, they should be something where we live in this expectancy. The idea behind expectations requires that someone else, someone does not know the future or outcome and is trying to control behavior to get the desired result. I do that all the time. All the time. Humans try to control behavior largely, largely through expectations. So again, that's just a short little snippet out of that book, but it really goes to the heart of, of how do we want to live? Do we want to live behind this, this horrible set of rules and um, procedures that people have to go through and they have to live around that are based on us? Well, I certainly don't. I mean, for me, it's, it's about living in that freedom with that expectancy that what is going to happen is going to happen, and I can't control it. Again, I can control me and my attitudes and my responses and the way that I show up in any kind of a relationship. And, you know, when you think about expectations and, and promoting the performance of others, um, I, I know I, I try to do that, and it doesn't work. Where when we live in expectancy, all of a sudden we have that freedom. And I think of it this way, especially with my relationship with God and, and giving, really trying to surrender and give him everything is the fact that um, he, he's always there. 
as I said last night, he's always been faithful and he will always, always make it right. And you know, I may not see for a long time how it, how it was right, but if I live in expectancy, I live in trust. I live in faith that what is happening right now, um, thank you, Brandon, um, is exactly the way it's supposed to be. And, and, I, and I'm okay with that. You know, sometimes it's a challenge. You know, today, I'll give you, I, I mentioned this earlier, today was my computer crashed. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, it's just, it, I, I don't know if it's something to do with the video card. I don't know, but I can't get it to, it, it looks like it boots up, but I can't get to the, the main screen. But I, it's, anyways, it was driving me crazy it, because I couldn't control it because I couldn't fix it. And, you know, I didn't handle it well, to be quite honest. Um, I was pretty childish about it, but um, it just made me so angry because all of a sudden I wasn't living in expectancy that, you know what, it's going to be fine. I'll get whatever's on there and, and it'll be fine. But instead it was all about, I got to fix it. I got to fix it. I got to fix it. Um, and when I do that, I get into these places that are not healthy. They're not healthy. Um, for myself, they're not healthy. You know, Paula was around me. It wasn't healthy for her to see. Um, I didn't, you know, respond or react very well to her. And, um, you know, that's just not fair. And that's that's living in expect, expectations and having those expectations rather than expectancy and really trusting that. And I know that's a silly little thing, but it's a computer. But it did. It, it set me off today. And it's things like that that can do it. It might be traffic. Um, it might be something that happens at work. It might be something that happens at home. It might be something that happens at a party, whatever. Um, but a lot of times if we really look back at if there was some sort of an event or someone said something and that really bothers us, us and we look at why, it's probably because we had expectations rather than living in expectancy. So it's, um, it's one of those things that um, we really just have to continue to work on. And it, it's not easy. Um, I struggle with it. Um, but again, I try to remember these things and I try to come back to them um, because I do have that awareness now that I can get there and and I can do, um, do a better job and I can learn from it. And even though I'm not perfect, um, there will be um, times that I have that opportunity to get better. And you know what? I love that. That's awesome because... Um, you know, there is actually, um, oh, I didn't read it. There was a quote that I was going to read tonight, um, but I chose a couple others instead. Um, but it talked about living and um, when we live just to get by, we're really just not dying, um, which is really interesting if you think about it. If we're not growing, it's the whole thing. If we're not growing, then what are we doing? We're just being stagnant and stagnant things just don't um, survive. And so, um, you know, that's really the big, big differences when you think about it and trying to live in expectancy. For me, it's just knowing that whatever happens is supposed to happen. As long as I'm taking the next right action, taking the next thing that I need to do that is, that is good, uh, that is honest, that is truthful, um, then, then I know that I'm, I'm living the way that I should. Uh, but as soon as I move into that that role of setting expectations, that's when um, negative things start to come into my mind and my heart, and and I start making you know not great decisions. I start reacting rather than responding, and um, you know we have that opportunity. So you know we want to live in um, expectancy. So um, that is going to be the end of expectancy. But before I do, I do have my quotes. Um, that I wanted to uh, share with everybody. And then I had that, I kind of mentioned this last night, but um, I have another offer for you guys um, that uh, have been watching me. But the first quote, and I do not know who said this, but it says, before the truth can set you free, you need to recognize which lie is holding you hostage. So I ask you, what lie is holding you hostage? What are you not sharing with yourself? What are you telling yourself that's not true? So the second quote, this one actually comes from Brad Paisley, um, which is interesting, but it says, tomorrow is the first blank page of a 365-page book. Write a good one. 
so of course he's talking about the fact that tomorrow is the is the um, first of a new year. Um, interestingly enough, 2020 is a leap year, so we have 366 days to uh, so we get to write a longer book this next year. Um, kind of fun and exciting. Um, and then the last one is uh, C.S. Lewis, and I've read one of his other quotes. He, uh, he's such a great author, um, and he has a lot of them. But this one says, "You can't go back and change the beginning." But you can start where you are and change the ending. So, what does that tell you? You can't go back and change the beginning, but you certainly can start to change the ending. And that's really what Bowtie Living is all about. And that I wanted to share with you guys is, is how do we take our beginning, no matter good, bad, or indifferent, doesn't matter what it is, how do we take that now and, and move into... Um, this new phase of our life. Um, and it's such a perfect time because we have 2020 starting um, tomorrow. And, uh, you know, and, and again, it's just, it's, it's another day and I understand that, but it's, it's a day that we celebrate as a new year. It's a new decade. Um, and so, you know, I ask, what is, the, what is that new ending that you want to create for yourself? What do you want to work towards? One of, my, one of the other questions that I wanted to... Um, to ask of you all is, and think about this, are there any dreams or goals that you've had that you put on the back shelf? You said, yeah, or someone said, oh, you could never do that. Um, or you're not good enough, you're not um, smart enough, you're not whatever enough. Um, and so you took that and you said, oh, they're right. And But are they? Is there something out there? I'll give you a great example. So this um, fall, or well, I guess it was late summer, um, I went to a conference up in Vail for work, and they had a keynote speaker there. Um, great guy, Kenyon Sal is his name. You know, he travels the country, and, and he's amazing. He talks about his his big thing is is not putting things um, that are on your bucket list and actually doing them. So what are yours? What is on your bucket list? Maybe it's not a bucket list thing. Maybe it's just you know you always wanted to whatever. Um, or, you know, you'd love to be able to, whatever, cook, knit, whatever. Um, well, I was at this and, and he, we were doing a bunch of different exercises and that, and he had asked for a volunteer and someone else, um, stood up and said what one of their bucket list items was. And then I raised my hand and he came over to me and, um, one of mine, and I'll share this with you. One of mine on my bucket list is that I would love and have for many, many years wanted to do this. Um, is to stand in the middle of a stadium like um, Mile High here in Denver, um, where the Broncos play, and do what I'm doing now. Give a message to 70,000 people uh, right there in the middle of the stadium. And um, he challenged me. He challenged everybody in the room and, and said, you know, hey, there's some people that don't get 12 months to do it. Some people, you know, they're, they're bucket list. They get 12 days, you know. 12 weeks, whatever it might be. Um, hopefully you're one of the fortunate ones that has some time that you can go out and do those things. And, and I challenge you, um, you know, it's a great night to sit down and, and pull, think back and think, hmm, what is it that I want to accomplish? And as I mentioned last night, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to jump on the phone with you guys. I'm, I'm rolling out some some coaching mentoring things that if you're interested in, in really achieving um, those goals and those dreams that, that maybe you once had that have kind of gone by the wayside or, or maybe you've been told you can't. Uh, well, you know what? No one can tell us that necessarily. Um, yeah, there's things I can't do necessarily. I can't go climb um, Kilimanjaro at least tomorrow, um, but I might be able to train if I wanted to, and that's not on my list. But, um, you know, there's things that we can do, and, um, I, I, you know, I challenge you. Um, pull those back off the shelf, dust them off, and, and really take a look at them and see if it's something that you want to uh, put your heart and your mind to um, in this next year. Um, and, uh, you know, if there's any way that I can help um, with you doing that, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Message me here on Facebook, and um, we can set up some time to jump on a phone call, or if you're local, we can meet up for a cup of coffee, whatever it might be. So, I, uh, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you all for jumping on and, and spending some time with me over the last week or 10 days or whatever it's been. I've truly enjoyed it. I'm not going anywhere. 
I uh, will continue to do Facebook Live. I don't know if I'm going to do it every day, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, if there is something on my heart or on my mind that um, I want to share, I'll definitely let you all know. But in the meantime, I really wish each and every one of you a happy, healthy 2020. It's going to be a great year. If you um, need to talk to anybody, want to talk to anybody, have get any ideas or anything like that, please, please, please feel free to reach out. I love you all and I'm so grateful for all of all of you jumping on and, and listening to me share my uh, my bow tie living stuff with you. So until we meet again, hopefully very, very soon, um, it is Will I Am, the Bowtie Sober Guy. Peace out. <laughs>